Right now, the Trump era remain in Mexico policy stays in place and Title 42 has an unsure future. Also, a Wisconsin woman has won the Miss America pageant, marking the first Wisconsin win in 10 years. Thanks for watching News 3 Now. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to News 3 Now at Noon. I'm Catherine Merck, filling in for Mark this afternoon. We start with some breaking news just into the newsroom. A former Dane County deputy who was fired after making an attack at a state park has pleaded guilty. Court records show Sarah Bortz Rodriguez pleaded guilty to a misdemeanor count of resisting or obstructing an officer this morning. She was accused of lying about being attacked at a park in Cross Plains in October 2021 and then lying to the department's investigators about it. The sheriff's office says dash cam video showed oh, no, Bortz Rodriguez cut herself and was not attacked. She was fired from the sheriff's office about a month after the incident. Now to weather where temperatures are going to get unseasonably cold right before the holidays. Let's head to the first alert weather center where meteorologist Greg Barnhart takes a look at your first certified most accurate forecast. Greg. Yeah, basically we're still in the influence of this upper level low that's kind of been spinning towards Minneapolis. So it continues to send waves and waves of little of snow and light snow and flurries. We're kind of getting the leftovers of it here for the next few hours or through today. You can see it there sitting there spinning for a while. Overall, you look at radar, most of the light snow, at least the accumulating stuff is up towards La Crosse, southwestern Wisconsin. But if you zoom in, a lot of areas are seeing a little bit of light snow with temperatures holding steady in the mid 20s. Southwesterly winds are causing some drifting of the snow too. There are some visibility issues out there with the snow. Nothing too bad, but still we're talking about half, one and a half to one and three quarters of a mile overall with the snow snow that's continuing to go on. Temperatures are not going to budge much today. Right now, 24 degrees. Overall, it's uniform across Dayton County, too, at about 24 or 25 degrees, and we haven't really seen that move too much all morning long. Really, what you're looking for driving conditions right now, there could be a little bit of light snow uh, off and on here through the afternoon. More of a band may be coming through later this afternoon or evening. Once again, you could see some light accumulation on roads, and also we're looking at maybe some drifting with the winds, too, and I'll time all that out and explain how cold we are going to get next week, which includes sub-zero temperatures a bit later in the broadcast. All right, thank you, Greg. New at noon, officials say a Madison family is lucky to be alive after their kitchen caught fire. Crews were called to the apartment on the 3700 block of East Carstens Drive just before 8 on Wednesday morning. Investigators say a pan full of food was left on the stove. They believe at some point a child in the home turned the stove back on, thinking it was similar to a toy they had. The family made it out safely, thanks to their smoke detectors. The Red Cross is helping the family and four others who were displaced by the fire. The downtown bar faces nearly 100 charges of allowing underage patrons to consume alcohol following an incident earlier this year. Police made contact with 143 people at the city bar on State Street the night of September 1st while conducting, quote, proactive enforcement of liquor laws. Only six of those talked to were 21 years old. In all 93 counts, every person was between 18 and 20 years old. The complaint filed by police said that some of the bar goers had multiple fake IDs and that the could have been found without careful examination. The Janesville Police Department is investigating after someone called early this morning saying their vehicle had been hit by gunfire. Police were sent to Jackson and McKinley Streets just after one this morning after a resident reported the gunshots. A few hours later, the shot vehicle had been reported. At 530, officers checked the area on the 300 block of McKinley Street and saw the car, but no casings were found. Janesville PD says they are continuing to investigate and anyone with information should call them at 608-756-3100. New at noon, Johnson's Sausage Shop is issuing a voluntary recall on a number of packaged pork products. The recall includes ham, bacon, and pork chops. The items were sold at a number of farmers markets and retail shops, including Johnson's Sausage Shop, Two Creek Farms, Vindicator Brand, and Wisconsin Meadows. No illnesses have been reported, but officials say the products could make you sick. For a full list of the recalled items, look at this story on channel3000.com. A federal judge is pausing the Biden administration effort to end the Trump era remain in Mexico policy. The ruling comes amid preparations for the end of a different immigration restriction, Title 42.
It's a blow against the Biden administration for now, but it's not over. A federal judge in Texas is preserving one Trump era immigration policy just as another is set to end. The so-called remain in Mexico policy prevents migrants seeking asylum from waiting in the U.S. during that process. The U.S. Supreme Court initially ruled President Joe Biden had the authority to get rid of it, but it sent the case back to the lower court. Right now the question is, did they do it properly under the APA? There are notice provisions, public comment provisions, you know, they're, they're specifically spelled out ways that you can enact policy under the Administrative Procedures Act. The judge ruled against the White House yesterday. Analysts say the administration likely will appeal and request a stay. If they get that, we'll go back to where we were before. Meanwhile, Title 42 is set to end next Wednesday. It largely bars asylum seeking at the southern border, citing public health. Yesterday, the Biden administration unveiled this six-point plan to prepare for the expected migrant surge. Already, a senior border official reports an influx in the El Paso sector. The mayor of that city says crossings could reach 5,000 a day starting next week. This Venezuelan mother says if her family gets a new life in the U.S., the first thing they'll do is thank God. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. 19 Republican-led states have asked an appeals court to keep Title 42 in place. They asked the panel to intervene no later than today. The Republican leader of the Wisconsin State Senate said Thursday that he opposes sending any state money to help Madison bring a passenger rail line that would connect the capital city to Milwaukee. The Senate Majority Leader said, quote, I don't think it makes sense to build a rail, even if it's mostly through federal money, if we're stuck on the hook, subsiding it for the next 30 years. Republicans control the legislature, and if they do not agree to state funding for the rail line, it could doom the project, which is envisioned as an expansion between Chicago and St. Paul. And the results are in. Miss America 2023 is from the Badger State. Miss Wisconsin Grace Stanky came out on top in the annual pageant last night, beating out finalists from New York, Texas, West Virginia, and Georgia. Stanky is a UW senior who's studying nuclear engineering. She's a Wausau native and now can add Miss America to her list of accomplishments. She wins a $100,000 scholarship and will spend the year traveling the country advocating for her social issue. Happening tomorrow, wreaths across America will be honoring our veterans. The public is invited to help decorate the graves of veterans of all wars with wreaths at Soldiers Rest Forest Hill Cemetery in Madison. It will be followed by a second ceremony at Union Rest. It all starts at 11 o'clock on Saturday morning. This year, they expect to place about 600 wreaths in the cemetery. They join more than 3,600 other locations across the country for National Wreaths Across America Day. There's more to come on News 3 now at noon. Congress avoids a partial government shutdown, and you may want to think twice before accepting that friend request on Facebook. That's all coming up in the Money Watch Report. You're watching News 3 now at noon. It's Steinhoffel's Winter Mattress Sale. Nestle in for a good night's sleep on a new Tempur-Pedic mattress. You'll sleep soundly when you pay only $45 per month with Steinhoffel 72-month financing. Tempur-Pedic mattresses are designed to make aches and pains a thing of the past by relieving pressure points and supporting you as no other mattress can. The Winter Mattress Sale, only at Steinhoffel's and Steinhoffel's.com. Relax, it's Steinhoffel's. Stop whitening your smile the old-fashioned way with strips and trays that can take 30 minutes to an hour. I'm Jonathan Greenhut, the CEO of Paraswabs. When I met Dr. Ginnaker and he introduced me to Paraswabs and I saw how effective they were and how easy they were to use, I knew we had to share it with the world. Paraswabs was clinically studied to whiten natural teeth as well as stained caps, crowns, and veneers. It's so effective, it works on stains caused by coffee, tea, red wine, and even smoking. For those of you who have that one stained tooth that's darker than the rest, Power Swabs can target that area using swab precision. My favorite thing about the Power Swabs is that I was actually able to take the swab and really get through some of those areas that are kind of like untreated. I felt like I, I can immediately see the results and I'm like, oh, I'm definitely starting to see the shades getting brighter and brighter or whiter and whiter. If you have yellowing between your teeth, if you have coffee or tea stains near your gum line, just 
snap, swab, and smile. And in each five-minute application, you'll see whiter teeth. So stop whitening your smile the old-fashioned way with strips and trays and start using the Power Swabs 5-Minute Solution. After just seven days, the results were awesome. Power Swabs was easy to use every day, and each day I could see it better and better, and from beginning to end, it's definitely whiter. Uh, and they look clean, they feel clean, and people have made comments about it, which is nice. Call for your 5-Minute Solution to Whiter Teeth. This holiday season, order Power Swabs and receive up to 40% off. And as an added bonus, get a free Power Swabs Quick Stick Pen with your order. The Quick Stick Pen is your on-the-go solution to help prevent stains from adhering to your teeth after drinking coffee, tea, or even after smoking. And in addition to saving up to 40% on your purchase and your free Quick Stick Pen, get free shipping by ordering now. Dial the number on your screen screen or visit powerswabs.com today. Habitat families build their own homes alongside volunteers, pay an affordable mortgage, and are grateful for your help. With safe and permanent housing, Dane County families can invest more in their health, education, community, and beyond. Please donate or volunteer today. The Senate has followed the House in passing a week-long funding bill to avert a partial government shutdown at midnight. The measure buys time as lawmakers work out the final details on an agreed-upon framework to fund the federal government through September 2023. The White House is bringing back its free at-home COVID test program as part of its winter preparedness plan. Just one request per household will be honored for four free tests through the website covid.gov slash tests. It comes as some health experts are calling for mask mandates with hospitalizations on the rise due to the so-called tridemic of COVID-19, the flu, and the respiratory virus, RSV. And you may want to think twice when you accept your next Facebook friend request. In a report released this week, Facebook's parent company Meta says it's seeing a rapid rise in fake profile photos generated by artificial intelligence. Meta has reported to Congress that it removes millions of violating posts and accounts daily, and it has invested billions of dollars in safety and security teams since 2016. That's your CBS News Money Watch report. For more, log on to cbsmoneywatch.com. In Washington, I'm Serena Marshall. Time to check Wall Street at the noon hour. The Dow is down 547 points. NASDAQ is down 158. And the S&P is 500 down 62. The holidays are time for giving, and that includes tips. So just how much should you give and to who? A new survey finds more people plan to give holiday tips this year, showing gratitude to everyone from housekeepers to teachers to trash collectors. But those tips are expected to be smaller, some by a few dollars, while child care providers could see half of that amount from last year. Bankrate says $20 is a good starting point for many services, but it's a personal decision. I think it has a lot to do with inflation. People want a tip, they want to show this appreciation, but they may not have as much money to go around. Bankrate says a gift or tip is this time of year is a nice way to say thank you and may also provide motivation for better work in the future. Out of all the age groups surveyed, millennials are most likely to give larger tips. Our call for action volunteers are in the building taking your consumer complaints and taking action on your behalf. You're taking a live look at the call for action studio. Volunteers are here every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. You can call for action yourself at 608-270-2833 or submit a claim anytime at channel3000.com slash call for action. Coming up, a look at today's ag prices next. Plus, Greg has a look at your weekend forecast. And then tonight on Live at 4, we talk to a professor on the recent push by the GOP to ban TikTok. We'll be right back. How much money have you wasted trying to find the right shade of foundation to match your skin tone? You end up with so many unused bottles, yet you can't bear to throw them out. Now, there's Color of Beauty self-adjusting foundation, which means you'll never search for the perfect shade again. It's really difficult for me to find a good tone foundation. I usually purchase about three or four and sometimes mix them. Color Beauty is a game changer in finding the right foundation. You put it on your skin and it transforms into your 
your own skin tone. The Color Beauty Foundation is so simple to put on. My skin looks great and it just looks awesome. The key to the innovative Color Beauty formula is tiny color beads that release and blend to perfectly match your skin tone as you apply it. The foundation is white when it comes out of the bottle, but when I begin to apply it, it adjusts to blend perfectly with the color of my skin. My biggest problem area is my cheeks right here. Color Beauty feels really light on my skin, and I can tell that it is pretty full coverage, so it looks like I don't have too much foundation on, but it is covering all my acne scars like I was saying before. I actually really love it. It's weightless, and it's full coverage, and also it literally just matches my skin as soon as I put it on. It's no work. I've never experienced a foundation like this. Color Beauty only comes in two colors, light and medium. If you have fair skin or you burn easily, go with the light. If you have darker skin, go with the medium. Plus, with an SPF of 50, they're getting the highest level of sun protection in a lightweight formula. And best of all is Color Beauty's exclusive special. Order this holiday season and get 40% off. That means you'll get the color adjusting foundation, the skin smoothing primer, and the fan favorite lash enhancer for thicker, longer looking lashes at 40% off. Plus, get free shipping. Visit color40.com or call the number on your screen. On the Jennifer Hudson Show. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. I get to hang out with my girl, Gabrielle Union. Plus, a music moment with PJ Morton. Then, Michael McIntyre. On the next Jennifer Hudson Show at 3. Be prepared for winter weather. Trust the first worn weather team to give you clear, timely, and accurate info. Keeping you safe and ahead of the storms. Your certified most accurate team. First worn weather. Only on News 3 Now. The Farm Report is sponsored by Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Welcome back. Pam Yonke from the Midwest Farm Report is out of the radio barn today. She'll be back later this week, but here are your farm numbers. Take a look. Giving and health experts say donating time, goods, or money doesn't just benefit those in need. Helping others has mental health benefits for the giver as well. Michael George introduces us to one special young lady who, despite her own challenging circumstances, decided to help those less fortunate. 14 year old Jocelyn Green of Westerville, Ohio, is paying it forward. With her friends rallying around her, the leukemia patient decided to use her wish from the Make-A-Wish Foundation to donate $10,000 to Nationwide Children's Hospital, where she undergoes treatment. The TVs up there aren't really up to date, and you're waiting there so long for, like, chemo or for blood transfusions, and there's really nothing for to watch, especially with, like, little kids. Friends match the gift by raising money at school. Nationwide pediatric psychologist Dr. Tammy Young Salemi says children can benefit by giving to others. It helps them um, feel more empathy, feel compassion for others, builds their self esteem. So it just really helps their whole mental health. Jocelyn's mom says her teen has always had the urge to help others. Even if her siblings wish, she'd chosen the trip to Hawaii. She couldn't imagine the guilt she would feel if she was sitting on the beach when she could have <laughs> helped other people. If people see this and they want to help, what would you say to them? Um, to do as much as you can, even something little can help. As for her own cancer journey, Jocelyn says she's doing much better than she was at this time last year. Michael George, CBS News, New York.
just Jocelyn undergoes treatments once a month now, which is less frequent than it used to be. Her last treatment is scheduled for January 2024. Well, temperatures are going to be start heading further south in the holidays. Here's Greg with the forecast. Greg. Yeah, we're going to have uh, that's going to be the big story cutting into next week is this going to be the cold temperatures. I mean, we still got snow going on, still some minor accumulation here today with a couple waves coming through. But tonight probably is about the last opportunity. We're going to see some snow, maybe some flurries tomorrow. The drifting of the roads with the winds will be still an issue even overnight through tomorrow. So that's one of the main travel impacts, especially further north and west to go. But over that, we're going to see the cold temperatures. And to give you an idea right now, that's the pattern going on up to the North, the cold air has been pulling, but by Thursday and Friday, it's going to be sweeping south eastward through basically the whole eastern part of the U.S., and that's through Christmas. So we are going to see a nice Arctic surge of air come down. Will we get snow with it? We probably will, but that's the big question is how much snow we get when it does eventually the front comes through. For today, we still got the low kind of rotating up to the north. It's kind of now shifted into Wisconsin, northern Wisconsin. We'll have a wave come through tonight, excuse me, this evening, and then it'll start lifting further north. Still some opportunities for some flurries as we go through maybe tomorrow, but more or less, I think cloud cover will persist. That's the main story we're going to see through Saturday. May get some finally some breaks and see the sun come out Sunday, but that's going to be a stretch too. But for today, mid 20s is about all we're doing right now. We're not going to see much going on. We'll see another kind of a band. You can see that push across southwestern Wisconsin and then kind of lifts north, kind of clipping the areas down here. So through this afternoon and evening, I think we'll see more of a light snow maybe a minor accumulation on a lot of areas that as this comes through this evening and then begins to lift north as you can see through 9 30 10 p.m. It starts then to dissipate a little bit as we get towards the e late evening hours. So once again, some light accumulation, you notice the temperatures they will fall back in tonight into the 20s, maybe even some teens. But once again, we're not going to lose the cloud cover even through tomorrow as you see still a few flurries out there and temperatures not getting much more than the mid 20s once again for tomorrow. Now what we're looking at is for another system Monday night into Tuesday. This one doesn't look impressive again, but it's going to bring another opportunity as a kind of a two waves, one to the south, one to the north, come across maybe Monday night into Tuesday. So it's going to be another opportunity for some light snow. Not significant, but once again, timing, if it does morning commute time, we get that, then it could cause some issues too. So other than that, once we're looking at that, you look at the 10-day, the big story out of that is the temperatures, and they are going to head south pretty quick once we get through next week, especially after Tuesday, Wednesday. You see sub-zero lows. That's for Madison, further north, uh, Fort McCoy, and those areas probably could be below 10 below zero or even colder as we get to next week. And that doesn't factor in the wind shield through this whole period, which will likely be well below zero by the time we get to the end of next week. There are snow chances. We are monitoring that one Wednesday, Thursday, Friday to see if that's anything significant. But like I said, stories, the cold temps and the snow is here to stay for Christmas, it looks yeah, like. Yeah, it's going to get cold, looks yeah. like. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, in London, Christmas is going to the dogs, corgis to be specific. It's part of the annual pup parade near Buckingham Palace. This will be the first Christmas without Queen Elizabeth II, who helped elevate corgis to royalty in the UK. She owned nearly 30 of the small herding dogs throughout her life. We will carry on the tradition. And uh, I know the Queen is looking at us. Queen Elizabeth died back in September. Her two corgis, Mick and Sandy, were reportedly right by her side. They're now being cared for by the Queen's son, Prince Andrew, and his ex-wife. A massive aquarium at the Berlin Hotel burst early this morning, injuring two people. The mayor says about 264,000 gallons of water leaked from the Aquadome Aquarium. A flood of water and debris rushed into a nearby street, which had to be shut down. Two people were hurt by splintered glass. Authorities have not addressed the fate of some 1,500 exotic fish that were inside. The 46-foot tall aquarium is located in the foyer of the Radisson Collection Hotel. Company officials said guests were relocated and the hotel was closed. A fire official said the cause is under investigation. There's still more to come on News 3 now at noon. Up next, Howard is counting down to the holidays in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. You asked for it, and today we're dishing it up. I hope you're hungry. I know I am. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. After a crash with a semi-truck, everything can change instantly. At Gruber Law Offices, we have the knowledge and experience to make sure you're protected. And we're here to help. 
whenever you need us. Gruber Law Offices. One call, that's all. This weekend, it's hy vees Big Pop Sale, Friday through Sunday, featuring six packs of your favorite Pepsi products. Just $1.99. You heard that right. Six packs for only $1.99. Pepsi, Diet Pepsi, Cherry Pepsi, Mountain Dew, Mug Root Beer, Sierra Mist, Orange Crush, and more. This weekend, all just $1.99 a six pack. Get your holiday guests their favorite drinks. Six packs of Pepsi products, only $1.99 and only at hy -Vee. Hey, thanks for working through the holidays. Clara, Dad says you're working over Christmas. Here you go, Mrs. Parson. <gasps> Let me pay you. No, you're not going to pay me. We are the helping Volunteering offers more than benefits for those served. Volunteers reap health benefits from the time they give. RSVP of Dane County's Driver Services Program needs volunteers to provide rides to medical appointments and deliver meals to older adults in Dane County. Ideal candidates are of legal driving age, love to drive, and meet new people. Schedules are very flexible, and volunteer drivers will use their own vehicles and are reimbursed for mileage. To make a difference, please contact RSVP of Dane County today. This holiday season at the Century House. Give $50 or more to charity and get $200 off any stressless recliner with power, any stressless recliner in ottoman, or any stressless office chair. Or get $200 off each stressless sofa seat or $400 off all stressless Mayfair recliners and ottomans in all Paloma leather colors. Shop the Century House, 3420 University Avenue in Madison. Every single day, we help families that have been tragically impacted in truck crashes. And you'll never pay us a fee until we win your case. Truck crash? Gruber Law Offices. One call, that's all. Every year, we get lots of questions from folks who are looking for new ways to serve seafood throughout the holiday season or on Christmas Eve. It seems like more and more of you want to change things up a bit and to introduce a little variety into your menus. Well, the good news is, today we're sharing a recipe that looks fancy, is crazy simple, and is so good, you'll be tempted to lick the plate. We begin by whipping up a shortcut Newberg sauce that's made by combining a can of cream of shrimp soup with some cream, a bit of sherry, and a little seafood seasoning. While this simmers, we pat some scallops dry with a paper towel and season them with salt and pepper. Now these get seared in butter just for a few minutes on each side. You'll know they're done when the scallops easily release from the pan. After placing them on a platter, we add some breadcrumbs and chopped parsley into the same skillet just to let it brown. Come dinner time, Drizzle the sauce over the scallops, sprinkle on the buttery breadcrumbs, and there you have it, a dish that's holiday special and is made start to finish in just minutes. To get the recipe for our seared scallops with Newberg sauce, check out our website. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a fancy schmancy way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. Yeah, cloudy conditions and light snow will continue through this afternoon and evening. Probably the last day we'll see it, but temperatures are not going to budge much, as you see right there, mid-20s with southwest winds. That's the things to know as we go through this weekend, too. Snow won't be much of an issue this weekend, but the temperatures will continue to be cooler, but not unusual yet. It's for next week is when we're going to start seeing those real cold temperatures go on, as you can see there next week. All right, well, thanks so much for watching News 3 Now at noon. We'll be back at 4.